Welcome um, to STEM week. STEM and week. tonight we are talking about um, STEM programming for students K to 12 in Boston Public Schools. Tonight, our goal is for our families to learn about some great STEM programs that are available for students K zero to 12 in the district. And hopefully our families will advocate to their schools to have some of these programs. Um, at their schools. So we want to welcome you. And I want to just introduce everyone. Tonight, our facilitator is going to be Joe Rosenbaum, who's the director of Boston United Way. And Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our panel. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us uh, today to celebrate STEM week, especially the family members, uh, to learn more about some amazing STEM programs for your kids. Uh, if everyone just let us know who you are in the chat, where your child or student goes to school, that'd be great. Uh, everyone also, please share your experiences on social media. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so my name is Joe. I'm the director of United Way's Boston Initiative. Uh, we're committed to uniting with communities to provide career-inspiring STEAM opportunities for Boston Public School students and all those who support them. I've had the privilege to work very closely with many of the programs we have on our panel this evening, and I'm excited for them to share all the amazing things they do with everyone tonight. So please welcome Seth from ACE Mentors, Julie from HMS Med Science, Karen from Latino STEM Alliance, and Solomon from City Sprouts. Uh, I'm gonna get us started with our first uh, few questions, and then we'll throw it out to uh, the audience to see what they have to ask. So first, we can go to the next slide, Beth. Um, I would love to hear from each of you uh, and just tell us a little bit about your program. Pretend I'm a student walking into my first time with each of you. You know, how old am I? What can I expect to experience? And just let us know, you know, how do we get connected with you? So we'll start first with uh, Solomon from City Sprouts, then we'll go to Julie, then to Karen, and then we'll end with Seth. And we'll thank you first for this opportunity to speak to all of you families about um, our programs and the partners that serve your students in BPS. So I'm the program director here at City Sprouts uh, and City Sprouts has two core programs. We have our school partnership program where our garden educators are embedded in um, nine BPS schools to teach science during the school day using our garden. Um, so for this to come to your school, parents need to advocate to their school leadership, their admin, and ask them to reach out to City Sprouts to advocate for a science uh, education program, specifically based in the garden that really gets kids to have hands-on learning experiences that they wouldn't normally have in a um, public school setting. Um, we're really excited about this program because we've created curriculum that aligns with the district and state standards for science, as well as the core ideas. So everything that your kids would be doing with us out in the garden is aligning with what they're doing in the classroom. Um, this program is for uh, pre-K through fifth, so we're really starting with those early learners to build that critical science foundation that all of our young kids need to be successful um, in professional careers and jobs later in the future. Our other uh, pro uh, main program is our Young Leaders Program, and within that we have our Youth Leadership Team. This is an after-school club that's available for middle school age youth 11 to 14 where they're gonna learn leadership skills in a garden setting or on a farm. Um, so they're gonna learn how to grow their own food. They're gonna learn, learn how to use that food. And through this, they gain valuable leadership skills. We focus on four C's, which are critical thinking, communication, creativity, um, and geez, I'm forgetting the, the last one now, but we focus on these skills that allow our youth to, to thrive in their community. So we have three sites that are East Cambridge, Dorchester, that are in East Cambridge, Dorchester, and Roxbury. Um, and they operate weekly uh, when, on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 5. So we are accepting uh, youth for all of our sites. And if you're interested, you can contact our educators or reach out to uh, me, and I'll provide my contact uh, information later. But our three educators contact information is listed on the slide with each of the locations that they operate in. For each of these locations, we have uh, partnered with a local farm to uh, work the farmland to, to be on site and allow our kids to really see what uh, goes on when we do gardening in the city. 
Um, Joe, I'll throw it back to you. Great, thanks Solomon. And as Solomon said, we'll make sure to follow up with all this information. So if you're having trouble taking notes, don't worry, we'll be sending this out. Uh, next, we got Julie. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, HMS MedScience? Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, so yes, I'm the executive director of HMS MedScience. And our mission is to inspire the next generation of diverse scientists, whether that be a doctor, nurse, EMT, paramedic, um, x-ray technician. We are a program that is currently in 26 Boston high schools. So it's usually for ninth to 12th graders. We have been at the Timulty at our first junior high um, with sixth and seventh graders, which was really fun never too young to get kids <clears throat> interested in the sciences. Um, and we have two basic programs. We have a semester long program. And so we are embedded or inside of a biology class at the high school level or an elective class or anatomy and physiology class. And what's really great about our course is that the home teacher teaches content, basic science to the kids. And then for one hour and 15 minutes a day, the kids put on their scrubs, put on their stethoscopes, get on the bus or the T or walk over if they're close enough to our Harvard Medical School campus where the kids actually feel like they belong there and that they can be doctors, nurses, and scientists. So here's a group of students, I think from I think this might be from Snowden, our new school, and they are doing a diagnosis on this patient with the blue hair. She's having a problem breathing. So we teach kids to critically think, problem solve, work in teams. And these are skills that employers and universities want. Um, we see the kids, and here is one of my lead teachers, OB teaching some kids about the lungs. The patient couldn't breathe too well. Um, and then kids can come back and intern for us. We really get to know our high school kids very well. Um, we also have a telemed program. Um, so we do a combination of this in person and we still continue on with our telemed program um, in certain um, situations. And we also have summer programming. And we're looking forward to working with the district and getting the Boston Public School students in on scholarship through our summer program. We have about 1,000 to 1,500 kids come through our summer kind of intensive program. But um, we're very proud. We have our first student from the O'Brien School who's in his third year of residency, surgical residency. We have many other students that are nurses and technicians, um, and we'd love to have your kids. So I think the best way is to, I don't think I might, well, yes. Um, you can contact us through our website um, and, we, you know, especially for the summer program, you can sign up online and just say Boston Public School uh, student. So if you want more information, uh, you should talk to the principal or the biology department to see if we're in your kid's school. And if not, help us get this program into your uh, kid's school. So we're looking forward to having them all come over. Um, they're great. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And yeah, maybe uh, if you're lucky, you'll have Julie pretend to be one of the patients for you. She always does such a great job of acting out uh, the different issues a patient might yeah. be experiencing. Yeah, I have a, a heart attack or all kinds <laughs> of different problems. <laughs> Thanks. Um, great. Thank you, Julie. I think next up, uh, we have Seth from a the ACE Mentor Program. Seth, why don't you let us know a little bit about yours? All right. Sorry about that. So. Um, as Joe said, I'm Seth. I'm a project manager with Gil Bain, um, one of the ACE mentors. Uh, also work on the outreach committee and the fundraising committee for ACE mentors. Um, our program is uh, catering to students in high school, similar to HMS, um, but are interested in architecture, construction management, engineering, or uh, some skilled trades such as uh, plumbing, carpentry, things local unions around. So we kind of encompass quite a lot um, from the construction side of things. Um, the program is a free after school program that meets once per week, um, coming up very shortly here. Uh, the students pick one of the times listed below to attend and we meet regularly. Right now we're gonna meet 
over Zoom as we did last year, but we're hoping to add some more in-person events or site walks as we've done in the past. So uh, it's a great program where we work on weekly uh, tasks or assignments to introduce students to the technology that we're using in construction or architecture and engineering. Uh, those three disciplines, as well as the trades, work very closely as we build up Boston, as I'm sure everyone notices looking around. There's a lot of construction, a lot of opportunity. Um, the good thing with the program is it's such a visible thing that the students see almost on a daily basis of buildings going up and uh, just different projects and different phases. So we get a lot of good questions and we try to build on those questions using activities like um, you know working with marshmallows and toothpicks and building structures and um, really getting into the the engineering behind that as well as the design factor um, we do a lot of scholarship work and as it says awarded 168,000 in scholarships to high school seniors last year so we uh, continue those relationships um, we have intern internships during the summertime for students as well, and um, hope to build up with Boston Public Schools. We have a pretty good list of schools that we work with right now. Um, I think the best way to get at, get involved is to ask the school if we're already there. Um, we most likely are, and if we're not, um, we have our website there, and we can be contacted through that. Great, thank you, Seth, and so great um, to have the architecture, construction, engineering fields represented, particularly the trades. It's one we often forget about and don't necessarily count as STEM, but I do count it as STEM. We put two T's in the STEM sometimes for tech and trades because uh, it's so important and there's so many amazing jobs out there in that field. So thank you, Seth, for coming on. And last but certainly not least, we have Karen from Latino STEM Alliance. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your program? All righty, uh, happy evening to everyone. Uh, buenas noches a todos. I am Karen Chacon, the Executive Director of the Latino STEM Alliance. Uh, we provide coding and robotics programs to students, uh, K through 12. Uh, we have most of our programs in Boston, but we also have programs in Lawrence, Haverhill, and in Springfield. Um, and basically, we as an organization provide the curriculum, the training, and all the equipment for teachers and other uh, people that work with youth to have their own robotics clubs that run throughout the school year. Um, so we provide all of that and then we provide, you know, continuous training for teachers. Um, we visit, we see the students, um, it's very exciting. Um, so we do have a number of sites that we have in Boston and I know that it's small font so I'm just gonna quickly read down the list. Again, it's from K through 12. We have the, we're at the Baldwin Early Learning Center this year, as well as the Donald McKay School, the Henderson Inclusion School, Tech Boston Academy, the Gardner, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School, the, ba the Blackstone Innovation School, the Hernandez, uh, East Boston High School, the Sarah Greenwood School, the Samuel W. Mason Pilot Elementary, and Thomas J. Kenney School. Uh, if you didn't hear your school and you think that um, your student might be interested in our program, feel free to email uh, our director of programs and partnerships. I have her email right there on the slide, lauren.cook at latinostems.org. Uh, or you can always visit our website uh, and check us out and send us a message there. It's latinostem.org. Uh, in addition to the um, learning that your student will do week to week, it's basically a weekly after school. They're gonna learn uh, how to code. They're gonna learn how to build a robot and they're gonna learn how to put it all together. And all of the curriculum that we've had or curricula that we've had over the years Every year is a different theme. So last year was robotics and medicine. And this year, I'm glad to follow up after Seth, it's robotics and the trades. So we're gonna be really taking a close look at really cool robotics in the trades um, because we can't forget the trades. It's that silent T, <laughs> second T in STEM as Joe was saying. Um, so overall, we last year we served more than 700 students throughout all of our sites. Um, and right now we're at about 21 active sites throughout the state. Um, and so we love to have as many students as we can. So if your student attends one of these schools, happy to reach, just reach out to us. We're happy to get you enrolled. Um, and if we're not on that, if we're not, if you, your school is not on our list, we want it on our list. Um, again, so email us or uh, send us a message on our website. And thank you again so much for having me this evening. Muchas gracias.
Thank you so much, Karen. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, everyone, for sharing. Uh, one question to follow up. Where do I sign up? How do I get involved in these programs? I can just dress myself up as a middle or high schooler and just show up, right? Um, I'm only half kidding. We'll definitely place the website of each of these programs uh, on the description for the YouTube video, uh, as well as email it out to those um, who signed up for tonight. Um, but I'd actually like to ask all of you uh, a second question. So the STEM subjects, not usually the favorite subjects of students, actually often the least favorite once we get to middle and high school. Uh, and also we know there's a huge problem where this field lacks diversity. It's the problem we're all trying to solve. So I'm just curious what all of you have, like what is your approach to making STEM more fun uh, for your program in particular, more accessible to those who are usually underrepresented in STEM. Um, so I figure maybe we could start with Julie and then we can go to Karen, then to Seth and Solomon. Okay, the first question, um, how do we make it fun? Well, we love science at um, MedScience. So I think when you start with staff um, that love something, it's kind of contagious. We think the jobs, um, in the sciences are where kids should be. It's, uh, you know, ever-changing, innovative, um, cutting edge. Uh, you can work in a hospital in the Longwood area, uh, make a good living. You can work up the ladder. If you start at one job, they'll pay for you, um, you know, to move on and get your RN. I, I Myself went to a community college. I grew up with a pretty severe learning disability. I started at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center with an associate's degree in nursing. And they paid for me to go to Northeastern and get my bachelor's degree there. Um, we feel it is work of the soul and the heart. And that when you give of yourself in these professions, you replenish yourself. Um, so I hire um, young scientists. I try to hire a diverse team. I can be what I can see. And um, somehow it works. And we have, I, I think I got stuck myself uh, at high school age. I mean, we have a lot of fun. Uh, we know what the kids are talking about and thinking about. Uh, so we just try to make it, you know, they come, they're in their scrubs, they have stethoscopes, um, they're leaving their high school building. Uh, you know, we have a pretty fun program in itself. So it's, it's not too difficult. So um, I just think it starts with the teaching staff. And I know on all these nonprofits, these are all my colleagues. I know that they all hire amazing, engaging teachers. So that's where we think it starts with and a real solid curriculum, right? And some data uh, proving that we're saying what we're doing. Um, what was your second question? You kind of answer, but it's also thinking about like, how do you make it more accessible to the yeah. folks we're really trying to reach? Well, you know, we've been in the Boston Public Schools, you know, Harvard Medical School, I'm a nonprofit house there, but Harvard Medical School is in the community of the Boston Public Schools. And even though I raise all my own operating budget and I do all that, they feel an obligation to have this community outreach and bring high school students to engage them in the sciences at a young um, age. So we make it accessible because we've had a very uh, great couple years with the Boston Public School staff that has started this portfolio partnership. And we have the Boston STEM groups at the United Way that actually helped us get into the Boston Public Schools and be sustainable there. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Um, and it's been working very well. So we are actually seeing two to 3,000 kids a year through our building. And the majority of them are kids who would never come on to the Harvard Medical School campus. So we're very proud of that. Great. Thank you, Julie. And, you know, such a sight uh, to see, you know, the Hashtag see yourself in STEM for this STEM week as it has been the last couple of years. And there's nothing like throwing on the outfit of a STEM professional or whatever it is to really literally be able to see yourself and think, oh, maybe I could be a nurse one day. Maybe I could be a doctor one day. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Karen, what about you folks at Latino STEM Alliance? Well, I mean, who doesn't love Legos? 
right? So that's how we have fun. <laughs> we, um, the robotics that we're building, we're building with Legos, um, but we're also using technology. We're using, you know, bricks and we're using motors and we're, we're doing the coding and the wires. Um, but beyond that, we try to um, do as much as we can outside of what we offer in the curriculum. So things like partnerships and hosting workshops that are really fun and engaging, like just this past year, we partnered with Julie's organization at MedScience and our curriculum was focused on um, uh, robotics, uh, robotics and medicine. And so, you know, that that partnership right there just made a lot of sense. So um, it was all online, of course, but it was really engaging. Our students loved it. Um, so it was something different. So trying to keep them engaged and not just doing the same thing every day. Um, we also obviously haven't been doing field trips the past few years because of the pandemic, but we were trying to do as much virtually as we can. But this year, hopefully, we'll be able to do a lot of really cool in-person field trips. And I know that's something that BOSTEM is also wonderful in helping to arrange for us. So we're hopeful that we can do some of that. Last but not least, we host a competition for all of our students. So um, they're following a curriculum during the year and towards the end of the year, we have this really big, fun, exciting competition. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where just everyone comes out, the students are so psyched, there's so much high energy. And then we also have all these other uh, community partners that are there with exhibits showing off their really cool STEM stuff. Um, so that's how we keep it fun. And then in terms of access, we feel very strongly uh, about serving black and brown students, particularly Latino students, given our name Latino STEM Alliance. So we focus on areas that have high populations of Latinos and black and African American students. So some neighborhoods naturally lend themselves to that. We're not in every single neighborhood in Boston, because let's be frank, some neighborhoods have lots of resources and they don't need our programs there. So we're really trying to reach uh, some of these under resourced communities. Um, and then besides that, we don't charge any fees for students. We never charge for anything uh, as part of our program. So it's accessible for students in that way and for parents. And then for schools, we don't charge for equipment. We don't charge for our time. You know, that's why we do all the fundraising that we do. Similar to what Julie was expressing, we have, you know, our own system set up for that so that we can just provide these resources and this great programming uh, and really try to break down those barriers that have previously existed for parents and for family. Thanks, Joe. No, thank you, Karen. Uh, Seth, we got you up next. You talked about these kind of sort of already in your presentation, but I'd just love to hear like, what have you seen that's been so engaging for kids? And, you know, what's been your approach to really building those partnerships with the schools where the students are that we want to reach? Yeah, so I think um, as Jen posted in the, in the chat there, we're available to any school in the greater Boston area, any Boston public school. We write this year we have five sites sites that we're doing um, for different days uh, of the week. Um, right now, especially virtual, we're more than accessible at any for every student uh, as long as they can you know get on the, online. Um, we put together our curriculum in a way that we can send the students a box with all the materials that they would need for the activities. Um, I think the engaging part from our mentors comes in the fact that we are, as a mentor and as your discipline lead, you're putting together that curriculum. So you work with the other mentors to find their passions that are in the a architecture, construction, or engineering fields, and they come up with the activity. So each individual mentor feels very passionate about that activity that they're teaching that week and that presentation that they give to the students. Uh, it brings a little bit more uh, personal feeling to it. Um, on top of that, we're all professionals in the industry. Uh, we're all volunteers. Uh, so like I said, I'm a project manager with Gilbane. I've worked with a lot of engineers um, from different companies around in the mentoring side of things. So we have the expertise and we have the, the sites available that we can pull things from. One of the best things I think that we give to the students are um, real life photos. Uh, for instance, I did a 67 story high rise in Manhattan and I can show the students from start to finish of that building. And it's like, whoa, it really is eye opening when you see it, um, actual photos instead of just something that's drawn or you know, something that doesn't look so real, something a little bit more raw, you know, taken with an iPhone or something. 
So I think it brings a little bit more uh, personality to it, a little bit more character. Um, the activities generally have some, maybe a little candy in it, some Kit Kats potentially. Um, but we, if we try to keep it fun for the students and I think the energy of an ownership of the mentors for the curriculum really make it that way. That's great to hear. Thanks, Seth. And then Solomon, uh, what about at City Sprouts? How do you make STEM fun and how do you reach the students we're trying to reach? Yeah, that's a good question. So at City Sprouts, all of our curriculum is hands-on project-based learning. So the kids are learning by doing. Um, the whole time they have their hands in the dirt, they're gardening, or they have their hands on plants or different STEM materials to help them build whatever we're doing. So instead of learning about something in a textbook or on the blackboard or whiteboard in school, they're learning about it with their hands, their eyes, all of their different senses. And so to speak a little bit more about our Young Leaders program, we have made sure that that program prioritizes uh, uh, black and brown youth, youth of color, and youth who have been historically marginalized or economically disadvantaged. They have first placement in our program. There's a great need there and City Sprouts wants to step up and serve that need. Um, while they're with us during our youth leadership team, like I said, they are working on those four C's to become leaders in our community. So communication, creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. And we're doing that in the garden. So again, they're all using their hands. Um, they're working together with peers who act and look like them as well. And just some of the activities that we do in the youth leadership team are building solar ovens. So how can we use the sun, the solar power to cook our food? Um, learning about how to grow plants without soil, so hydroponic growing, um, as well as our youth leadership team feeds into our summer program, which is a uh, five week long internship for middle school youth. And if you do our youth leadership team, you get to go to that program automatically. You get a spot reserved. Um, and at the end of this summer program, you are actually awarded a hundred dollar stipend for learning more about how to garden, learning more about STEM, and just getting a more in-depth knowledge about how to build a solar oven, how to do a hydroponic growing unit. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to learn more about science through the garden. And I think because it's so hands-on and because you're with a bunch of kids that are your age, that are middle schoolers who are going through the same experience, you're able to actually build and make friendships. Um, we all know that keeping in touch with our friends over this past year has been really difficult. So City Sprouts is in person. Uh, we meet weekly and we'll be in person this summer as well. And so it really gives a, a chance, an opportunity for kids to be back and have some type of normalcy in their lives while exploring science in a safe, uh, you know, safe space for our youth. So I'm really excited for, you know, the fall. Uh, we'll be, we are meeting on our farm sites. If parents are interested, they can get in touch with City Sprouts. Uh, our programs are entirely no cost. So everything is free at City Sprouts. All of our material and resources are free. And if you want to join, you'll have a blast and you can just reach out and we'll get you signed up. Not only are you free, but you pay the kids for participating. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. So if you're looking to earn a little bit of cash this summer, any middle schoolers out there, $100 to buy the next video game and the next pair of shoes, look for City Sprouts. Thanks, Solomon. Thank you all. Um, so we're, we're running out of time here, but I do have one uh, last question for folks. But before that, just want to give a special thanks to our friends at Boston Public Schools, you know, Beth in particular, for helping to organize all this, all the panelists for taking the time to share what you got for our families and everyone else who's contributed to making this happen for our students. So my last question to everyone is really focused on the families and what advice do you have for them listening tonight about how to help their kids understand the importance of STEM and support them in exploring STEM and everything that it has to offer, even if their kid doesn't even eventually end up in a you know, STEM career. Uh, so let's start with uh, Karen and then we'll go to Solomon, to Julie and Seth can wrap us up. Thank you, Joe. Um... I was trying to think about this and I think, you know, everyone is interested in different things, but the beauty of STEM is that STEM is really everywhere. Um, and having that understanding of STEM and how those different components can fit together or, or what that means for a particular career, that could be for anything. Um, and it's having those building blocks of those different subjects that can really prepare you for anything that you want to do. So that's, 
you know, that's kind of the beauty of it, or at least how I see it. Our mission at Latino STEM is to inspire and to empower students just to pursue these interests, um, you know, just explore them and, and see where something might fit. And even if something is more on the artistic side, you know, many of us would argue art is STEM and STEM is in art. And so just understanding those different principles and it can be really fun, um, but it's the wave of the future. And, you know, it's something that we really need to prepare all of our youth for because it's not going to be going backwards anytime soon. Um, and so being at the forefront of that and being able to take uh, um, opportunity, take advantage of that, sorry, <laughs> uh, is really important. And I think for those of us that can help students along the way, you know, we're going to do as much as we can. So parents, we're with you. We're here. Just as much exposure as you can, you know, in, in helping your students find their way. We're, we're all here with our different programs to help them find that very special interest. Great. Thanks, Karen. Solomon? Yeah, I think much like Karen said, we City Sprouts really strive to make sure that any STEM that we introduce the kids to is relevant to their lives. Um, so, for example, if a kid's really into video games, how can we use Scratch to have them design their own video game and build that and share that with their peers? If they're into art, can you help us make a creative art piece that explain STEM to another student. So we really try to make it relevant. We also try to make sure that our educators can make uh, real lasting connections with the youth. And so that it's not just one time and done, but that the youth come back several years in a row and really develop a deep interest for STEM. I also think for parents, is it's you just don't force it. Like, I think kids like to naturally move into something and when it's forced upon them, they feel like it's not their own. So we really try and give our kids ownership about whatever they do. So that means taking home all of the projects that they do with City Sprouts. Also means giving them opportunities to share and invite their friends to see what they've done too, so they feel proud and have ownership over it. Um, so I think as much as you can, just making sure that any sim that you bring to their lives, make sure it's relevant. If, you, if your kid is interested in uh, computer programming or design, have them start to work with their phone to make a new TikTok and understand what goes beyond, like what underlies making a TikTok. So that way they put those good social media schools to use and design, and design their own app. Um, so again, it's all about just making it relevant to them. Um, and I agree with both of them. I don't have much to add, but I'll, I like what Karen said about try and explore. I think um, kids are hesitant to try new things, but it's amazing how they can fall in love with something they never knew that they uh, potentially could even like. Um, we're trying to help kids find a passion because it's so much easier to get to where you wanna be if you have like, I wanna be a nurse, you know, I'm passionate about that. And what is the trajectory to get there? So we try to help the kids, you know, show them you go to high school and you try to get this GPA and what are the schools? We do a lot of mentorship. Um, what are the schools they can apply to and what they have to do. So that's half the battle. Um, and even if they're not that interested in science, um, they'll get a lot of health literacy from our program. And all these programs are free for these students. And um, knowing how great these programs are, one of these programs will inspire your child to want a, a career in a STEM profession. To send them along. Thanks. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, I think kind of echo what everyone is saying. It's it's the support. It's don't not forcing it. Um, you know, we do presentations at the end of the year. You know, having parents and friends there means so much to these students. It's, it's a big part of their lives on a weekly basis from October to March. And they want to show off that product that they worked on. So it's supporting them in that it's the take home activities. You know, we do scavenger hunts around the house, helping them out with that, being interested in what they're doing. Um, and then it can be as simple as, you know, driving around in a car. Boston has a lot of great architecture, a lot of big construction going on. So it's being present in, in that moment and not, not on the phone. And if your kids see you off your phone, they're most likely going to be looking around, looking at the things that maybe you're pointing out as you're, going through the city um it's a great place to be and there's a lot a lot of stuff that you can learn from just looking around so i would say that um in addition to what everyone else has said that would be my advice great 
Well, thank you all again. Really appreciate your time tonight. Uh, and for all those families out there, make sure you check out these programs, get your kids signed up or go to your school administrator and demand that they invite some of these programs <laughs> into your school because they're awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Thanks for hopping on. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.